Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Shikha Mehta and I'm a nephrologist on your UAB transplant team. In this video, we will talk about some of the immediate and long-term complications of kidney transplantation. I would strongly encourage you to invite your caregiver to watch this video along with you. Transplantation is an amazing journey that tests the limit of human strength and courage. It requires commitment, faith, as well as mental, physical, and emotional endurance. It is one of the life's greatest challenges and among the rewards is life itself. The long-term success of your kidney transplant depends upon many things. During this module, we will make sure that we introduce you to some of the key points so that you can have a smoother experience after transplantation. First and foremost, it is very important to understand rejection. Rejection is the most common and important complication that may occur after receiving a kidney transplant. Your body has a defense lineup known as the immune system to protect you from foreign bodies such as cold viruses. Since you were not born with a transplanted kidney, your body's defense lineup thinks of the transplanted kidney as a foreign body and tries to attack it. The process of destroying the transplanted organ by your body's defense lineup is called rejection. It can occur any time after transplant, but most commonly in the first year. If recognized early, it can be treated to avoid any further organ damage. Some of you might have heard about anti-rejection medications. What are anti-rejection medications? In order to protect your transplanted kidney from rejection, your body's defense lineup needs to be weakened by medications which are called anti-rejection or immunosuppression medications. It takes multiple medications to weaken that defense lineup in your body. At times, you might be taking a handful of pills multiple times a day to prevent rejection. The moment we make a mistake or forget to take our medications, the body's defense lineup is ready to fight the transplanted organ. And hence, it is very important to take your medications on time, even if you're feeling well. In addition, many patients stop taking certain diabetes and hypertension medicines when they're on dialysis. With a new kidney, those medicines may have to be added back to your daily regimen. You will also have to take extra medicines to prevent infection. We recommend that you should always take your medicines as instructed. Do not skip or change doses without discussing with your transplant team. We will monitor your drug levels by blood work and may change the doses of your medicines as needed. The number of medicines after transplant can be very overwhelming for both you and your caregiver. It will be very important for you and your caregiver to learn about all your medicines. Many patients use a pill box to organize their medicines. You can also use digital alerts and phone alarms to help remind you to take your medicines. Last but not the least, please notify your transplant team if you're having difficulty getting or taking any of your prescribed medications. A lot of patients ask me that what are the downsides of taking anti-rejection medications? Medicines can be very expensive and insurance co-pays vary with every insurance plan. Some insurance plans require you to pay a percentage of drug costs instead of a traditional copay. 
please check with your insurance company to find out what your prescription plan covers and what costs you may expect and ask about specific transplant medications. Also, notify your transplant team immediately if you are having trouble affording medications. Some drug companies can help provide medications. Unfortunately, though, not everyone qualifies for this type of help. Transplant social services can also help you apply for financial assistance. Your chances of getting cancer are greater than those without a transplant as your anti-rejection medicines decrease your immune response and may decrease body's defenses for certain type of cancers. Some of these medications may cause birth defects, so let your transplant team know that you are planning a family six months ahead of time. Transplant medicines can also predispose you to weight gain, diabetes, and high cholesterol. Other common side effects include headaches, tremors, hair loss, and diarrhea. If you're concerned about any side effects, then please discuss it with your transplant team. You and your kidney are very important to your transplant team. We will educate you and your caregiver to empower you with knowledge on how to protect your kidney and take care of yourself. The pharmacists will go over your medication schedules with you every time you come to see us and create a personalized plan with you. You will see your transplant provider on a regular basis and we will monitor you with blood work. We believe prevention is always better than cure. At six months, we will require for you to undergo a transplant kidney biopsy to make sure your body is not trying to reject your new organ. Last but not the least, we want to hear from you and we are always available for you. Next up is Dr. Darnell Mompoint Williams, kidney transplant nurse practitioner, and she will talk to you about staying healthy after transplant. Hello, my name is Darnell Williams, and I'm a nurse practitioner with the UAB kidney transplant team. I'm so happy that you've chosen UAB for your transplant. We'll start our discussion looking at ways to stay healthy after transplantation. So first we'll take a look at your diet. This is going to play a very important role after transplant. A healthy, balanced diet can help prevent weight gain, high blood pressure, as well as high blood sugar. After a kidney transplant, plan to follow a diet that's low in sodium but high in fiber. And a balanced diet is going to include a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, it's going to include lean meats as well as whole grains. Since your immunity will be lower after transplant, your risk for infection will be high. Therefore, avoid foods that are uncooked or raw. And also make sure to wash your hands thoroughly after handling foods, especially raw chicken and eggs. And last, it's going to be very important to drink plenty of fluids. Exercise is also going to be important after transplant. Uh, it's something that we recommend that you engage in at least three to four times a week. And each session should last 20 to 30 minutes. Exercise will be important in managing and preventing high blood pressure, cholesterol, as well as diabetes. Now, just remember to slowly increase your activity and always listen to your body. You will want to avoid contact sports that can cause trauma to your transplanted kidney, such as kickboxing or football. And again, drinking plenty of fluids is going to be important, not only during, but even after your workout. After transplant, you will be able to return to both work and school, and this is something that you can discuss further with the transplant team during your clinic visit. Now, there will be some habits that will be important for you to avoid for your overall health and the longevity of the transplanted kidney. If you currently smoke cigarettes or cigars, seek assistance in quitting. After transplant, you can drink alcohol, but you want to do so in moderation. 
Recreational drugs such as marijuana, cocaine, should be avoided now and especially after transplant. Now, taking anti-rejection medications will lower your immune system and therefore put you at a higher risk of getting infections. However, there are several things that you can do to decrease that risk. One of the first things I actually was taught in nursing school was how to wash your hands. And this is because it's the number one way for preventing infection. Washing your hands, using soap and water for 20 seconds, or even using alcohol-based sanitizer. You also want to make sure that you wash your hands after handling raw meat or even touching your pet. And avoid being around anyone that you know is actively sick. So that means they're actively coughing, they have fever or diarrhea. Uh, also avoid contact with children who have received a live vaccine. This can cause you to become sick due to viral shedding. And you want to make sure to also keep your immunizations up to date. This would include flu vaccine as well as pneumonia vaccine. Now after transplant, you'll find that you'll become more energized and therefore you'll have a desire to engage in sexual activity. In some cases, sexual intercourse may even become more enjoyable. Any sexual function problems you have that are related to kidney disease or dialysis can actually improve after transplant. You will want to wait until your surgical scar has healed prior to engaging in sexual intercourse. It is recommended to practice safe sex after transplant and use two forms of contraception. Another positive finding after transplant is that your fertility can improve. So women of childbearing age will want to use a measure of birth control to prevent pregnancy during the first year after transplant. After the first year, if you want to become pregnant, then it will be very important to discuss this with your transplant team. One of your transplant medications can actually cause severe birth defects, and therefore your medication regimen will need to be changed. And last, we'll look at communication because it does play also another very important role um, when you have a transplant. Uh, so after transplant, you'll be assigned a transplant nurse coordinator. You will meet that uh, coordinator before you're even discharged from the hospital. And your coordinator will be your first point of contact with the transplant team. One way to contact your team is by calling. And at time of transplant, you'll be given a phone number that can be used to contact both your assigned nurse coordinator as well as your transplant social worker. The patient portal is another means of communicating with your team. The patient portal allows you to send an electronic message to your coordinator. When you have your first clinic visit after transplant, you will be asked about joining the patient portal. The portal is also a great way to access other information such as your lab results. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And again, also thank you for choosing UAB. And now I turn it back over to Dr. Shikameda. Thank you, Darnell, for such an informative presentation. And thank you all for your attention and taking time to watch this video. Your transplant team looks forward to meeting with you in clinic soon. To make your appointment go smoothly, please bring your current medication list, names, and numbers of all the doctors you've seen until today, your healthcare record or journal if you have one. Please write down all your questions and plan to spend at least two to three hours in clinic exclusive of your travel time. Thank you for choosing UAB and allowing us to go on this journey with you.